flowers are sprouting. Birds fly from their nests. Ships fare north, fare south as well. Roads lie open when you rise. The fish in the river dart before you. Your rays are in the midst of the sea. The entire land sets out to work. In the Trobriand Islands, fishermen lure fish to their nets with a song. Every sunrise from the great urban centers like New York and Tokyo, to tiny hamlets in the highlands of New Guinea, to jungle villages in Venezuela, men and women begin to work. From their labor springs the great cycle of economic behavior that makes every household, every gift, every culture possible. Production and distribution, these are the central components of that cycle. Distribution, the system of allocating resources in a society, takes three forms. Reciprocity, redistribution, and market exchange. The Kung of southern Africa's Kalahari Desert are one of the last groups to maintain the foraging life, which was, until 10,000 years ago, the universal mode of human organization. The Kung live according to the rhythms of nature and share their food so that everyone can expect a portion. Theirs is an economic system based on generalized reciprocity, a form of exchange in which no one calculates the value of what is given or expects to be repaid in kind. For the Kung, this ensures that everyone will eat even during fluctuations in the supply of plant foods and game, and regardless of the individual's ability to provide for his or her own needs. Women gather a variety of plant foods, contributing from 60 to 80 percent of the food. Mongongo nuts, gathered by women, are the main source of protein. Kung men also gather mongongo nuts, but meat is their main contribution to the group's diet. Distribution of meat according to the principle of generalized reciprocity reinforces the solidarity of the group. Because it is accompanied by ceremony, distributing the meat emphasizes the interdependence of all members of the group. Until very recently, the economic system of the Kung was so efficient, it allowed them to live without fear of drought or famine in the hot, dry Kalahari Desert. In recent years, outside pressures have limited their hunting range, forcing the Kung to live as marginal, impoverished farmers. This has resulted in both increased danger of starvation and loss of their traditional economic sufficiency. Vaca and Orinoco rivers in the steaming jungles of southern Venezuela live the Yanomamo. Unlike the Kung, the Yanomamo rely primarily on their gardens for food. Their most important crop is the plantain, which is similar to the banana. In addition to plantains, tobacco, hammocks, dogs, and arrows are also treasured goods. The Yanomamo are preparing to exchange these items at a great feast, as part of a ritual involving balanced reciprocity, or the giving of equivalent gifts. This feast establishes an alliance between two villages who are often at war with each other.
The visitors drink a soup made of boiled plantains and then present themselves in full battle dress before the feast begins. Ritual dancing precedes the serious business of cementing an alliance through an exchange of gifts. Through a stylized display of strength, Yanomamo men try to gain an advantage in their economic and political transactions. feast, the hosts must give whatever their visitors request, but fear that the visitors will not reciprocate at a later time with a gift of equal value. The fear is that negative reciprocity will occur, an unequal return for a prized possession. Both the exchange of valued goods and the ritual displays help to emphasize the alliance that has been created. During the feast, both sides try to obtain the greatest benefit for themselves, while at the same time acknowledging their relationship to their exchange partners. Formal exchanges based on balanced reciprocity shape future relationships among the Yanomamo. The men's displays of strength are designed to ensure they will not be taken advantage of by their trading partners. One of the most elaborate examples of balanced reciprocity is the Kula Ring, practiced by the Trobriand Islanders who occupy the South Sea Islands off the eastern tip of New Guinea. Men of the Trobriand Islands sail in outrigger canoes over hundreds of miles of ocean to exchange Kula ornaments. Red shell necklaces are traded for white shell armbands. Both necklaces and armbands are purely ceremonial. They are intended only for ritual exchange. Always traveling, always changing hands, Kula pieces belong to one person for a time and then must be passed on. Each Kula piece has its own name and its own history. Its value is based on who has owned it, who has wooed and persuaded others to part with it through magical spells and on competitive negotiations. The necklaces and armbands increase in worth as they move from island to island. Trading partners are expected to repay each other with gifts of equal value, but no one can be forced to do so. Through skilled negotiation in the Kula Ring, a man can increase his status and gain prestige, thus gaining an advantage in other types of economic and political transactions. Among the Mendi in the nearby highlands of New Guinea, economic exchanges involve both balanced reciprocity and redistribution. Redistribution is a form of distribution in which goods are collected into a central place and then given out again. Marriage negotiations are marked by an economic exchange in the form of bride price. In exchange for the bride's labor and fertility, the groom's family compensates the bride's family with a payment of pigs, shells, and money. Dressed ceremonially in new reed skirts and decorated with shells and oil, the bride formally receives the bride wealth for her family. 
She then distributes the pigs, shells, and money to the males of her family. This creates economic and political alliances for both herself and her husband. Unlike some other Highland New Guinea groups, Mendi women are expected to maintain exchange networks based on balanced reciprocity that are independent of their husbands' exchange networks. However, women are excluded from redistribution networks maintained by their husband's patrilineage. These redistribution networks allow men to accumulate prestige and political influence. An especially skilled negotiator can become a big man, a political leader who can influence others but not exercise formal control over them. The pig feast is the most important redistribution event in the life of the Mendi. Before the kill, the head of the clan, who seeks to become a big man, decides each portion of meat to be given away. Preparations for the feast involve an elaborate system of exchange networks. Long before the feast, the big man has loaned pigs to his wife's relatives and other economic partners. As the time of the feast approaches, he begins calling in his loans of pigs. Giving away the meat sets up another round of obligations. The guests at the ceremony must reciprocate with an even larger pig feast at some future date. In Highland New Guinea, redistribution networks like the pig feast provide the context for a system of political alliances among groups who were traditionally at war. disputes are settled more directly through the economic exchange of the cassowary contest, which can take years to arrange. Men draw on their personal exchange networks to accumulate a large number of cassowaries, large flightless birds similar to the ostrich. The birds are displayed, distributed, and sometimes killed in a dramatic ceremony. of these contests is to demonstrate a man's personal economic strength, so it is considered a form of weakness to call on one's clan members for help. Pig feasts allow a man to accumulate prestige through his clan relationships. Cassowary contests allow him to demonstrate his skill in forming personal exchange relationships. Both, along with the exchange partnerships of individual men and women, link together isolated villages in a network of economic interdependency. These Asante women, who trade fruits and vegetables in a large marketplace in Ghana, also negotiate within a network of economic interdependency. But their system of distribution, the market, reaches far beyond their local group. The market is a system of distribution in which the value of goods and services is determined by supply and demand. The Asante women set prices and control the distribution of various types of plant foods over a broad area. Hello, <laughs> 
Disputes among the women of the marketplace are settled by heads of the various divisions, which are based on particular types of food. These women gain their place either by negotiating within the market society or by skilled political maneuvering. Uba acquired her position as head of the plantain division through her ties to the Asante royal family. <laughs> The Asante market reflects traditional social relationships within the family and in the society as a whole. It allows women to exercise economic autonomy without challenging the authority of either their husbands or the Asante royal family. nomads of Afghanistan negotiate within an economy that includes both Western and non-Western aspects. Where once Alexander the Great and Genghis Khan spread their influence by fire and the sword, more recent invaders have brought Western economic systems that transform the trading practices of a traditionally pastoralist culture. The Maldar move from the Turkestan plains of Afghanistan to the high grasslands to feed their sheep and their goats. Separated by vast distances, the nomads carry out all important business exchanges at the market, which is the very heart of many non-Western economies. come to the marketplace to trade a lamb or a goat for the wheat produced by others. But goods are not all that is traded at the market. Information is also exchanged. The market is a place to gossip, to learn the news. The marketplace is a center for establishing and reinforcing a variety of relationships. Even before Westerners arrived here, Money was a major medium of exchange. Money is a more portable form of wealth than a goat or a pig, and it stands more easily for an agreed-upon value. Money 
transforms the nature of work and exchange. These young women practice the ancient art of carpet weaving. Now, however, their parents are paid by the hour for their work. The carpets are used not by members of their families or by nearby families, but by people who may be half a world away. The market expands to become not just a place, but an abstraction. This ancient form of wealth has now become part of the world economy, the world market. The local market and the world market are separated by vast cultural differences in perception and in values. Industrialization and the world economy has brought dramatic changes to societies that were once centered on local systems of exchange. A market system combined with a cash economy dramatically changes the nature of distribution. set by blue chip stocks, the Dow Jones Industrials. But the advance today was across the board, big companies and small, on the New York Stock Exchange, the American Exchange, over the counter. Much of what is sold on the world market is an abstraction, a concept of value far removed from the products consumed in traditional societies, food, clothing, tools, and materials for housing. One day drop in two years, most brokers raced to sell, and a lot of people got hurt. By the time trading ended today, gold was selling for $400.50 an ounce. But prestige is still an important part of the market system. Prestige is one of the commodities exchanged in any system of distribution. From around the world, a vice president blamed falling oil prices for the sharp drop in gold. In a cash economy, we sell our work even within the family. We are socialized into the cash market system as part of our family relationships. Yeah, that's fine. Right. Yeah, you got started very good. You really think you're worth two bucks an hour? I think you deserve about a buck. I think that's what I deserve, y'all. Uh, a buck fifty? Yeah. He deserves a buck ninety-nine. I'll pay a dollar seventy-five, and then you can pay Marie. Okay. Marie gets a quarter from each of those. For each of what? For each of my hours. Do you have a dollar bill? Yeah. You show I owe you three weeks? Is that right or not? That's right. Three weeks? No, I owe you three weeks. You were getting paid while she was. Give me a dollar bill three back, weeks. please. Oh three God. times three is nine. Okay. I want a dollar back. An economic system based on cash places a dollar value on social relationships, and money becomes a symbol for other types of exchanges. Yet, even though most of the world now operates within a cash economy, systems of reciprocity and redistribution are still important means of expressing social relationships. Gift exchanges within the family often follow the principle of generalized reciprocity. Parents give gifts of higher value than do children. Gift exchanges among peers are governed by a strict system of balanced reciprocity. As among the Yanomamo and the Trobrianders, in North American society, unequal gift giving can damage social relationships. Redistribution also plays a part in the North American economy, and people can still gain prestige by lavish displays of wealth.
the predominant type of distribution system, whether reciprocity, redistribution, or market, is intricately bound up in all other aspects of a society, its pattern of subsistence, its kinship networks, and its political organization. No matter how elaborate an economic system becomes, it continues to reflect and reinforce important social relationships.